Dr. Darla, remember you've got your mask on. They can't understand you. Oh, hold on a minute. There. Is that better? Yes, that is much better. Oh, today we're going to talk about the naughty daughter. Oh, I hope you're not a naughty daughter. Of course, if you're a boy, you can't be a naughty daughter. <laughs> All right, so... Let's see. I'm going to let her tell you the poem of the Naughty Daughter in just a minute. But I want you to know that today we're doing our special sounds, A-U-G-H-T and O-U-G-H-T. So the tricky part is when you see them in a word, you're going to want to circle A-U-A -uh in faucet or O-U-A -uh in faucet out, out and out or uh, in country. Okay, so it is not um, that way when you see the G-H-T after it. So we've got a lot of silent letters going on here, don't we? Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. But what you're going to do is you're going to circle the whole thing. A-U-G-H-T, ought in caught. And there we have again, A-U-G-H-T, ought in caught. And you see the words naughty daughter. All right, now we've got O-U-G-H-T, which sounds exactly like A-U-G-H-T. So the naughty daughter, believe it or not, is going to help us to know what is the difference uh, and to help us know which words have the A-U-G-H-T. All right, so on O-U-G-H-T, remember, we're not going to circle O-U, we're going to circle O-U-G-H-T. So what's that word? Fought and O-U-G-H-T. And what's that word? Bought. Oh, they rhyme, fought and bought, don't they? And uh, we are going to now just concentrate on the naughty daughter. The naughty daughter. What did the naughty daughter do, Dr. Darla? Why are you coming to see us about a naughty daughter? Well, let me tell you, boys and girls, her mother said, do not pick up insects. Some of them bite and others of them sting. And she was not a very obedient daughter. She was a naughty daughter. Okay, so tell us the poem. Oh, no, no, I got to tell you what happened. So anyways, she, guess what? She picked up a bee. And you know what it did? Yes, it stung her. And my goodness, then they had to bring her to me because she was so swelled up. My goodness, I thought she was going to pop. Well, she did it because I gave her some medicine to help. But the moral of the story is, boys and girls, obey your mom and dad, whether you're a girl or a boy. Were you ever a naughty daughter when you were little? Um, yeah, sometimes I was. Oh, that's too bad. And I always, yeah, had bad consequences eventually for being a naughty daughter. So I had to learn not to be a naughty daughter. I hope you learn not to be a naughty daughter or son. All right. So tell them the poem. And if they use the poem, they can help. It will help them remember the A-U-G-H-T words because there are only a few of them. That's right. If the words are in the poem with the ought sound, those four words are the ones with the A-U-G-H-T. Here it goes. The naughty daughter was taught a lesson when she caught the bee. Ouch! Yes, so let's see those words, and I'll say the poem again for them. What'd you say? What was that? We couldn't hear you. You lost your voice? Oh, uh-oh. Okay. Well, maybe you'll come back later. All right. <laughs> All right. That was Dr. Darla, and I don't know why she lost her voice. Uh, let's say, let's look at our A-U-G-H-T, ought in caught words. Now, in this picture, it's a fish that's being caught, but in the poem, it's a bee that's being caught. So here we go. The naughty daughter was taught a lesson when she caught a bee. Say it with me. The naughty daughter was taught a lesson when she caught a bee. 
Now, I hope you can remember it so you can say it with Dr. Darla before we end. Say it one more time. The naughty daughter was taught a lesson when she caught a bee. And those are the ought and caught words. Now, O-U-G-H-T has only a few words also, but we're not going to have a poem for it because if we know the poem for the A-U-G-H-T words, then we won't... We'll just know that any other word is an O-U-G-H-T word, right? Okay, so here we go. Bought, fought, we already saw those two, brought, sought. Sought means to look for something. He sought everywhere for his book but could not find it. Sought. Now, on your paper, and here's your paper again. It looks kind of the same as any other paper, but on the back side of it, you'll know it because it's got, ooh, fish and chips. So in Australia, I guess they like fish and chips. I like fish and chips. In section one, you're going to circle the special sounds. So I'm going to give you 20 seconds. Let's see if you can get it in 20 seconds. Ready? Go. to start it. Stop. I only gave you 10. You didn't even need 20 for that, did you? I didn't think so. You're just circling. Did you find T-H and then O-U-G-H-T and then in daughter A-U-G-H-T and E-R and in haughty Oh, haughty. Oh, my goodness. There is a fifth word. We should say the naughty, haughty daughter. She thought she knew best. She thought she knew better than her mom, and then that bee would not sting her. So we could add that word haughty into the poem. Maybe Dr. Darla will do that for us at the end. Okay, so haughty has A-U-G-H-T, and then Y-E in baby. Taught has A-U-G-H-T, Fought has O-U-G-H-T, and Brought has Burn Bride, B-R, and O-U-G-H-T. Did you find them all? There should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 of them. And I, I'm sorry, I switched up really fast for you on the, on the timer there. All right, so now we're going to go on to the bone, the remember bone, and it says, read it with me, an exclamatory sentence shows strong feeling and ends with an exclamation point, whoop, boink. Can you say it with me without looking? An exclamatory sentence expresses strong feeling and ends with an exclamation point, whoop, boink. All right. In section two, we're going to read the sentences and draw three little lines under each sentence that should be capitalized and place the correct punctu punctuation at the end of each sentence. Let's read it together. Why is Australia called the land down under? I'm going to put three little lines under the W because the sentence must begin with a capital letter. And what are you going to do at the end? Whoop. Boink. That's right. It's a question. All right. The next one. Australia is a continent on the bottom half of the world. Yeah, you're going to put three little lines under the A for Australia. Not only is it the beginning of a sentence, but it's also a name. So it definitely needs a capital A. And what kind of punctuation goes at the end? Boink. Declarative sentence. Next sentence, when Australians celebrate Christmas, it is summertime. You know what? The way I said it made it sound like it was whoop, boink, but I think it's just supposed to be a fact. When Australians celebrate Christmas, it is summertime. Boink. Sometimes it depends, though. A sentence can be exclamatory or have a period, depending on how it's said. If it's said with strong feeling, then it's going to be an exclamation point. All right, did you put three little lines under the I? It should be a capital letter. Guess what? The word I is always a capital letter. Just that word, I, is always a capital letter. How about this one? Uh-oh. I messed up, didn't I? I'm sorry. <laughs> I 
I'm not going to go back and start the video again. I skipped down. My I skipped down to the wrong sentence. That sentence did not begin with I. It began with when. Okay, so when needs the three little lines under the W. All right, now let's go on to the sentence with I. And yes, you're going to put three little lines under the I. I'll put it back again because I, the word I, always is a capital I. I am amazed at all the incredible animals in Australia. You're right. Whoop, boink, exclamatory sentence. How about the last one? Koalas are so cute. Three little lines under the K, because it's the beginning of the sentence. And what at the end? Whoop, boink, another exclamatory. All right, number three says write an exclamatory sentence about Australia. If you have trouble thinking of one, there's two things you can do. One, I'm going to attach in the activity time section of the lesson plans a video of something interesting in Australia. If you can't think of anything, then maybe you can use that to give you an idea. It's going to be just a really short video. The other thing is you can think about the bulletin board that's that was in the classroom the Bonzer work bulletin board and some of the pictures on that if you happen to notice those. So you write an exclamatory sentence about Australia. Let's go on to the dictation and you can come back to that one in a minute. I'm going to tell you a, a word and you're going to write two special sounds in the word that I say. The word is greater greater. Actually, that has three special sounds. So if you want to squeeze in three, you may. Greater. All right. Did you hear gur and grin? Did you hear a and steak? And let's just squeeze in, er, I know we only have two blanks, don't we? But we can, we can fit two in one of the blanks. Squeeze in ER also. You don't have to, but you can if you feel like you just heard all three and you want to get them in there. Now, in the next two spaces, right over here, right here, we're going to put two special sounds in the word handspring, handspring. If you're in gymnastics, then you know what a handspring is. Don't stop and do one now. You shouldn't be doing that in the house. Handspring. Actually, the hand part doesn't really have any special sounds, does it? But the spring part does. It has SPR and ing spurring first blank second blank now in the next part it's a sentence and you just have to fill in the two missing words spelling them correctly and there's one both of them actually are tricky there's one that a lot of people spell wrong even though it should be easy all right so uh jan saw two rabbits hopping on the lawn. Jan saw two rabbits hopping on the lawn. All right, did you spell, did you spell saw, S-A-W? I hope you didn't put an L at the end. Some people say saw instead of saw. It's pronounced saw. And then some people want to write it like the name of the king in the Bible, King Saul, Jan Saul. No, that's a name. That's not the word saw. So it's just S-A-W, saw. Jan saw two rabbits hopping. Now, this one is a tricky one because if you only put one P, 
then it's going to be like the silent E got dropped and it's going to actually the O is going to be long and it's going to be hoping. And they weren't hoping on the lawn, they were hopping. So you've got one consonant and a short vowel, so you've got to double that P. Hop has one P, but this is what's true. Hopping and hopper have two. So did you get those? Very good. Let's see. On the back, I think you will, as long as you do it carefully, will do fine. I do want you to remember that. I'm just going to warn you. You're going to see some words, and I want you to remember that TCH comes immediately, immediately after a short vowel. If it's not immediate, then it's not TCH. It has to come immediately after a short vowel. So TCH is always at the end of a word of a short vowel word. Now, let's see if Dr. Darla can add that word haughty in for us. So we're going to say the naughty, haughty daughter. Are you ready, Dr. Darla? You ready? Coming up here? All right, very good. All right, will you lead them in it? We're going to add the word haughty. Oh, she was haughty too. Boy, she was telling her mother everything to do, just bossing, bossing, bossing her around. All right, let's say it. Ready? The naughty, haughty daughter was taught a lesson when she caught the bee. Ouch! All right. Thank you, Dr. Tarla. And you have a good day. Stay away from those bees. <laughs>